So this is what I'm working on. Uh, it's going to be a uh, vacuum pallet changer, similar to uh, the VM300 made by Mighty Byte, except this one will be a little bit more specific to the Tormach. Uh, let me turn on some of these parts here. So as you can see, how this will work, uh, there will be two sets of locating pins on the inside and two sets of O-rings. So you'll have uh, these locating pins will hold a pallet um, 6 inches by 12 inches uh, for smaller parts and then the outside locating pins will hold pallets that are uh, 9 by 18 which is the working envelope of the Tormach. Uh, it'll be held down by these five bolts. There's uh, two and a quarter inch stainless steel bolts that go through right here. Uh, just a little uh, vacuum dial that'll be screwed into the front and then there'll be an air inlet here. Now if I get rid of this body here, on the inside you'll see that there is a vacuum generator in here and how this works is there's a hole here that runs along the top comes to about right here, cuts down and so this o-ring is sealed, this o-ring is sealed and then when these screws are removed, depending on what sections of the pallet you're using, it'll let vacuum come down, go through this Venturi um, vacuum generator, and get exhausted through the back of the pump. So, if I turn this back on, the bottom of the pallet has an um, evacuation area here, and just kind of runs along, and uh, hopefully to try to keep the noise down. I just evacuated it down into the table so this area will be exposed to the uh, the T-slots in the table. Hopefully that will keep the noise down a little bit because it is going to move uh, a little over 4 um, CFM through that pump to generate uh, 28 inches of vacuum. Um, right here, this is actually a, uh, uh, a sleeve that's uh, going to be more round than a circle that the Tormach could mill. Uh, so with this perfectly round hardened steel sleeve, uh, you can, uh, in the future, putting a pallet on top of it, you can set the origin to the center of this and it'll be more accurate uh, in theory. And then this, uh, you could technically, if I wanted to, to touch off to the surface of any, any part of this, I could, but I just had, I set a specific place here to do a uh, Z touch off, just that way pallets that I use in the future uh, will be consistent. Theoretically at the beginning of the day I could set my origin to this one place and then continually change out pallets all day uh, and and never have to reset a zero point. Uh, all the pallets would, would be set to the same origin. So that would save some time down the road. Uh, so I've got all the parts in over the last few days. All the wrenches. Here's the uh, the locating pins. I did some tests on those. Uh, got my all my MPT threads, and then here's the uh, the vacuum generator here. I got that from my uh, AirVac Engineering. Um, pretty decent price. I mean, it's for a it sucks in about four CFM. Uh, it's going to put out about 28 inches of vacuum at 70 psi, uh, and it was only 35 bucks. So price doesn't get much better than that. Plus I didn't want to have an external vacuum generator uh, so it's kind of cool that this was uh, insertable into the part. And then uh, you know the o-ring stock and I've got more o-ring stock over here. This is going to be what's actually on the face of the of the pallet. I'm about to uh, just do a facing. I've been just kind of messing around with this thing but I'm about to face off. This will end up being the bottom. Um, face this off and then uh, flip it over, start milling the holes and uh, and I'll keep everybody posted. Alright, so I just finished the first uh, two sets of operations. First one was to uh, cut the sides down, uh, which is a little difficult on the Tormach only because uh, this uh, pallet changer takes up the full working envelope so it pushes it has to be perfectly centered because it goes all the way to the outside limits of the mill uh, so that was the first or that was the second one the first one was just uh, putting the holes in so I put some hold downs on the outside drilled these holes uh, ran bolts down to it took the hold downs off so that way I could uh, mill around the outside 
And then for this uh, step that I'll do tomorrow morning, uh, you get flipped over, mill out this area on the bottom. And then I haven't written the code yet, but the, uh, the next step will be uh, the facing operation, everything on the front. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, the, the next step after that will be these holes here. And then the last step will be this facing operation. Uh, and then it'll be done. I'll take it off and get it anodized. So here's what we've got. So I've got the bolts in. That's where they'll uh, that's where they'll be. And then the side. I just did it with a roughing end mill, so it's got this texture to it. Actually, I was afraid the texture wasn't going to be very good. Um, but it's actually kind of cool looking. It's almost like knurled. So I may end up just keeping that instead of uh, trying to mill that off. And then I uh, have to cut that off and I flip it over. And I'll start the next operation in the morning. All right. Just locating now uh, to start the bottom operation. I uh, spent a good chunk of this morning uh, messing around with Pathpilot. Uh, for whatever reason, this morning it didn't want to boot up, so I had to get on the phone with Tormach. Uh, and their solution for everything is to re-image the hard drive, which worked, so can't complain. So now I'm going to re-put in the tools that I need to do this job, and I'll fix the rest of my tool table later. Um, but other than that, I'll be making chips here momentarily. Alright, so I just finished milling all this down. Um, Deburred the edges a little bit with a hand file. Uh, that turned out pretty good. Did have a little mishap right here, but other than that, it turned out pretty good. So, that's the bottom. Alright, so about to do the, uh, the facing operation or the drilling operation on the front. Um, not sure how acceptable or how rigid this is going to be, but uh, I mean it's all squared up and everything. But it's uh, it seems pretty rigid. I can't, I couldn't get a lot of flex out of it putting um, a dial indicator on it. So hopefully this will be rigid enough for what I'm doing. Uh, well, that actually went really well. Uh, all the holes look good. Depths were all good um, for the small amount of milling to to kind of uh, clean that up. Um, it, I was expecting a lot of chatter uh, because of the way it's it's fixed, but it uh, didn't make any noise at all. It was fantastic. So that went well. Now the last step is uh, the front face and tapping those holes. All right, so right now we're doing the uh, cutting the face. Uh, so what I did is I, I faced off the top, uh, took about 50 thousandths off, and then now it's going through and it's cutting in the uh, uh, the flat lands uh, in between in the vacuum space. Well, I faced it off with a quarter inch end mill, which even though it took forever, um, I got a finish on the surface that looked like glass. So we'll take a look at it real quick. That's what it looks like right now. So anyway, it's going pretty good. Should be done in about an hour. All right, there she is. I've tested her out. Time to take her down and uh, do a little bit of cleanup work so I can get it anodized. Um, took a little bit of fiddling around to get this O-ring um, the way I wanted it. The O-ring they sell it on McMaster as a 3 16 but it's uh, it's actually a bit bigger than that. I think it comes out to like they say it's 210 but I actually mic'd it out and it it comes out it averages at like 235 so it's considerably bigger. So in order to get it to seat nice and uh, the problem was it didn't actually have enough pressure on the small, on the bigger pallet it did fine, but on the smaller one to actually suck it all the way down. Um, so I've got it now where it's only sitting above the aluminum about 15 thousandths, so it's uh, way better. Um, and yeah, it sucks down super fast, super strong, so pretty happy. Um, I put a uh, vacuum gauge on it, sucking right now at 70, um, 70 psi. It does pretty much what it's, you know, the, the vacuum generator does pretty much exactly what they said it'll do at about uh, 27 and a half, cranked up to 90. 
uh, it pulls about 29. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'll play around with it and see where I like it, but um, definitely get the suction that I need. Uh, I've got a few more things to test, but pretty much it's done. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, so for threading those holes in the front, let me grab the taps I used real quick. So the taps I used are for threading uh, pipe. So with a pipe, you can go through the pipe in a little ways um, to get to the to the larger portion. Let's see if I can focus here. To the larger portion of the threads. Uh, the problem here is that I can only go in so far. So like this, I only went in about a half inch on this one with the threads. So uh, I went to just thread something in there to test it. Um, and it only went in about three threads because I only had the first couple threads of this uh, this tap in there. So what I did is I ground down um, about half of each one of these taps uh, in order to get to the wider portion of the tap. And so I tapped it once, ground it down, and then tapped it again, uh, and it and it worked much better. So I can actually seat something, you know, almost all the way down in there. So that's good. And then I did the same thing with this guy here, which took a bit of doing, but. Uh, uh, this guy, yeah, anyway, so that worked out pretty good. Uh, other than that, she's pretty much done. I'll get another quick snapshot after I'm done. Uh, I'm going to sandblast it. I did some tests. I was uh, nervous at first with sandblasting it. Um, I did. I wanted to sandblast it to get a nice even finish on the top. However, uh, I didn't want to uh, mess up the tolerances of the aluminum. Uh, but I did some tests running all the way up to 90 psi sandblasting, even focusing on a small area, and uh, and then and then uh, checked it out with a dial indicator, and it really has no effect on the tolerances, um, not much effect anyway. So I'm gonna run it at about 60 psi, um, just lightly to give a nice, uh, uh, you know, sandblasted texture to it, um, just to get rid of a lot of these lines and stuff. So that's it. I'll take one more video before it's done.